Hey, so welcome back, and here's another daily go problem. So today we're going to do one called minimum sum of triplets. And so uh, what we have here is just one input array called nums, and you want to output some integer value. And so what you want to do here is essentially what we have is with this array, we have what we call mountains. And so you can kind of envision something like this, where uh, basically what creates a mountain is three different values. And so you can see here, uh, the values that we can kind of call is basically, there's one at i, there's one at j, and then there's one at uh, k here. And so these values could be something like the value of, uh, let's say, uh, let me see here, I just want to find an example, uh, one here, and then five, and then three. And so you can kind of see here, as values increase, it kind of hits that peak and then it falls there uh, to a smaller value. And so this is kind of what uh, constitutes a mountain here. So basically uh, the number at i has to be less than, uh, or at least the index location. So say this is, and we can kind of see them here, the index is start at zero, so one, two, three, and then four. So this is at index uh, two here. So it has to be behind the second index or the index j, which is at index three, and this one's at index four. Okay, so they all have to appear se sequential. And then essentially, the number at i has to be less than the number at j because that allows you to have that peak. And then finally, the number at j has to be greater than the number at k. And so it doesn't kind of keep going up. In order for this to be a mountain, it actually has to fall at some point. And so that's what you have here is from j to k, the number is actually less, so it has to go from j and down to k. All right, so essentially that's a mountain. And so what we want to do is to find the minimum possible sum of basically all the possible mountain triplets here. And so one thing to catch here is although it did show you an example where they're all kind of consecutive here, they don't have to be. So they can actually be um, like non-consecutive. So let's try to find an example of that. Um, if you look here, yeah, so we could do something here where it starts at four, it goes up to seven, and then down at uh, two here. Okay, and so basically that is another possible mountain. So it goes uh, basically from four up to seven, and then down to two. And so they're not actually all consecutive in this case. So we kind of skip over uh, some of these numbers here. And so I believe this is the, actually uh, the most uh, optimize answer here, so three, four, five. So what they output is, yeah, one, three, and five here was their output. And so that's basically because you wanna output the minimum possible sum, which is basically the sum of the numbers at indexes i, j, and k, okay? And so essentially what we're gonna do is we're going to iterate from left to right, which is a common uh, thought process when you're solving these problems. And we're basically going to try to just find these uh, mountains and whenever we find one we just check okay is this one uh, does this mountain have a total sum that's less than our current kind of minimum mountain total sum uh, if so then we found a new minimum otherwise we did so we're basically going to be kind of checking all the possible mountains and then uh, just taking whichever one has the minimum possible sum so how do we do this well i think the first kind of a most intuitive thought here is let's go from left to right once again. And so as we're iterating, we're going to say, okay, say we're at this location here and you kind of have to start at index one, not index zero, because you have to have uh, a number on the left hand. Okay. So we're basically always looking at whatever we're pointing at would be the middle number or the peak of the mountain. We're going to say, okay, what's the minimum number on the left hand side? Well, it's going to be eight because there's only one. Then what's the minimum number on the right hand side? And so it, when we get this, so the minimum on the left is eight, the minimum on the right is one, and then the middle value is six, is this a valid mountain? And while unfortunately it isn't because eight is greater than six, uh, but let's go ahead and maybe uh, move over one. So we do that again. So now we're point at one, what's the min on the left? It's six, that doesn't work because our peak has to be greater than six. So Let's, uh, let's keep moving over here. And once we're at five, we then see, okay, what's the minimum on the left here? 
Well, that is going to be 1, which then the middle value is going to be 5. And then what's the minimum on its right-hand side? Well, that's 3, which goes down to 3. And then that is a valid mountain. So we basically include that as our new kind of running minimum uh, total sum. We just keep iterating along. That is actually the only mountain in this case. But if we found another, we just kind of compare the minimum sum. Okay, so let's go ahead and implement this. That's basically the core logic there. And so to do this, what we'll have is basically we want to have a kind of result or minimum sum here. So let's just call this min sum. And initially, this is infinity. Uh, what we can have is basically a no possible a minimum uh, sum or like no possible answer. So in that case, we'll just return negative. So basically, uh, we'll return negative if our minimum sum is still infinity. Otherwise, we'll actually return our minimum sum. So that's just to handle that case. Another catch here is we need at least three numbers uh, in our array because if there isn't, then uh, we don't have all three points to build that mountain. So that's just a quick answer here. So if the length of our numbers does not equal uh, three, then let's just return negative one as well. All right, but if we get past that point, then we can actually come up with an answer. And so essentially, uh, we're just going to iterate through this array. So for i, and we can also grab, or no, we'll just do in range, uh, basically from one to the length of our numbers, uh, minus one here. And so this is just because, uh, basically, because we always want to be pointing at the middle number, we don't want to have a middle number at the start of the array or the end of the array, because there has to be a number both on the left and right hand side, because it's sort of kind of constrained to the middle numbers here. Okay, so in other words, uh, within this array, we're going to iterate through this range for our middle numbers because we know we can't have a middle number here uh, nor here. All right, and so from this point, we want to say, okay, what's the minimum on the left and what's the minimum on the right? So min left, and we also want min right. So that's just going to be equal to basically the minimum of whatever is in this array all the way up to this index i here. All right, and so similar thing. But then we want to go basically on the right hand side. So that's basically going to be i uh, from this point. And I believe we want to not include this current one. So it's i plus one. We don't have to add a plus one here because it's like non-inclusive. All right, and so from here, we're going to say, okay, do we have a valid mountain? So check if uh, this mountain is valid and if so then we can see if we found a new minimum so we just say okay if the minimum on the left is less than the current number that we're looking at and that number is also greater than uh, the number the minimum number on the uh, right hand side like so so we want to reverse this then we found uh, a potential new minimum sum so basically the min sum is going to be the minimum, and I'll just shrink. Oh, where'd I go? Uh, quick time player, there I am. <laughs> and so I'll just shrink me down here. And so from here, we'll just say, okay, the minimum of uh, basically the current minimum sum and the sum of these three numbers here. So uh, let's just yank these. So min left plus this current number plus the number on the right here like so. So let's go ahead and try running that. Oh, uh, else after if. So let's just think here. So um, if, ah, so we want to have an equal equal here. So let's just see what went wrong. We're opening negative one. So we're just always opening negative one. So what we want is to minimize this, we're setting to infinity the max number possible. So maybe we're never hitting this case. So we're going to say min on our left, is it less than the current number i? It's less than on the right. Mm. Yep, min left. Not sure what's wrong here. Um, Just looking at my notes here. So min equal to i, i plus one to i. Oh, 
oh <laughs> and so basically all that we want to do here is i said does not equal three but you want to make sure that it has at least three so uh it's basically here so so if it's less than three then it's wrong yeah let's submit that and success so basically this runs in o of n squared because essentially uh, this iteration here well uh, that's o of n because we're iterating through the length of the array but here we're essentially just going to iterate once again through the left and right side with each iteration to find the uh, minimum sums and so for space complexity it's essentially uh, just o of 1 here because we're not using any extra data structures and we're just uh, restoring their constants all right so i hope that helped a little bit and good luck with the rest of your algorithms all right thanks for watching